Before we get into that, we could reduce the some code here because you're getting pretty pretty heavy down to almost 100 lines. Well, we could reduce most of these buttons. The top button is unique, so we'll leave the login button as is. But mooses to shop are all the same. Anything that repeats or has a pattern in it, programming is pretty good to make a loop or say make one type of button and repeat it five or six times. We can demonstrate the comment out button because you can comment out every button right now. Awesome. Yeah, except for the top one. Star? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, star then slash. So the stars are on the inside. So we might still need some of that information, so we'll commenting it out just for now and then deleting it later once we do clean it up. Since we want to loop through everything in button names, like you got a list or an array on line 19, yeah. except for login. Yeah. So maybe we can take login out of that list oh, right here. and then fix, yeah. Uh, no, button press equals that. That's all right. right. Yeah. You'll yes. put in the literal words. It has to be spelled exactly like it is up there. Or consistent, at least. Not yet. You still need the, the colon for the declaring the body of the if. Okay, and on line 21, where you're setting the value of the button, that has to be updated to the literal string as well. So your login button should still work, hopefully. And that's without pointing to your button names zero. So you can erase it out of there. Yeah, mooses will become zero from by doing this. So now we're going to make a button for every name in the list. In this list? Yeah. And when I say list, yeah, it's interchangeable with the word array. We'll design one button and then we'll repeat it. Oh yeah. So you could probably start off with copying one of those. Or even start the comments underneath that button. Now you got one button. Okay. Since we're going to have a loop and a body for the loop, and this button is going to be inside the body of the loop, because we're saying loop, but we want loop means to repeat a chunk of code over and over again. Yeah. So we want lines 40 to 47 to be this chunk of code that repeats. Like we want to repeat um, yeah, yeah. so many buttons. You're going to use the word loop to initiate the loop, but then you're going to use those lines there to be the body of the loop. The loop here? Yeah, and it starts with a capital L, just the way I set it up. Loop, and then the counter name. It's a list of button names. Yeah. And then each button name, this is what the variable is going to point to. Like it's going to be zero on the first time around and one on the second time around. So you're going to use that variable to get to the... So any of Well, this is just the name of the variable you use. So you have a choice here to what you want to call it. You can just call it anything. It'll be like the current name in the button names. It's oh. like the the page in the book sort of thing. Button. Okay. Right. Is that okay? Yep. So loop this variable so many times. And what we want to do is say button names dot length times so you got name there, but that's your variable, but what we want to do is loop it the number of times, the number of elements you got in line 19. Yeah. See there you got uh, eight. Yeah. You could just type in the word number eight, or you can say button names, like the, that name you had at line 19. Yeah. But not it has nothing to do with this name here. This name is just going to be the variable that changes zero, one. So it goes, but instead of names dot length, Name is on its own, so a space after name. Yeah, we'll just take doing a couple of these to get how it goes. 
Now it's button names, because we're going to the array, the name of the array, but we want to know how many elements in that array. So dot length is how you get the number of elements in the array. So we're looking for the number eight. So it's uh yeah, it's on the left side of the dot. So you can use square brackets here to get access here to the yeah. No, there you would have a, a colon just saying how you access a, a race. But at, on the right side of times, have a put in a colon to indicate there's gonna be a body of code that you that is going to loop or repeat. Yeah. So you got a couple things going on. You are making eight buttons. They're all placed on top of each other. And all their texts are pointing to the second element of button names. See button names brackets one? Yeah. So instead of one, you can use name because name is going to change in each loop, each cycle of the loop. Yeah. And that's created on line 39. So all your buttons are being drawn on the same spot. Like the position? Yeah, yeah, right here. Yeah, so all you gotta do is move them down. Like, the first one doesn't have to be moved down, it's in the right spot, but the second one has to be moved down. Yeah. So make a new line underneath the... Okay. Inside the button, but not inside the on-click. Here? Yeah. That would work, or even above the on-click, but either way works. On this line, we're going to set the top, because we want the distance, like this layer's top, like the distance from the top of the page, to yeah, increase. Yeah. Okay, your current top is 19%. Yeah. And your current height is 4%. So we know the next button down should be at 19 plus 4, meaning like... This one is at 19, and the next button should start at the bottom of the current one. Yeah, so it should be 23. Yeah. So you could say top equals 19, because that's where it currently is. I capitalized things, but built top in. Equals? Uh, equals, yeah, just single equals. And go 19, because that's our starting position, plus 4. And here you go times the B name. And the first pass, B name will be zero. So it'll be 19 plus 4 times zero, which would be 19. And then the second time, it'll be 19 plus 4 times 1. Uh, but it's still not working because top is expecting a string that has the word percent symbol at the end or PX at the end. This is doing the right math, so now you got to add the percent symbol at the end of it to make it a proper string for so the dot. dot. No, here you go plus and then quotation. But this plus is more of a concatenating strings, not really uh, doing any more math on it. Like yep, yeah, and that should be. So if you times it by five, you'd have a bit of a spacing. You'd have a one percent spacing between the block because you'd be pushing further down than its height. Yeah. Now we can update the, the focus method. Before we were using a variable, and that's what the if button press and button press, like all that could be replaced with on focus and on blur. So inside the buttons that we're generating, just similar to the on click event, so on focus and on blur will replace the on click. Couple. It's optional. Yep, yeah, because there will be a body, it's a, an event. And same thing with on blur. So on focus means what do you want it to do when someone clicks on one of these buttons or selects one of these buttons? Like it's an empty body now, but at least there's a body. Oh yeah, I guess we wanted to uh, turn red. Yep, yeah, when it's focused, right? And black when it loses it. Yeah, and pretty much the on click can disappear.
Just hit backspace a couple times, yeah. Well, the top button, we're not really oh, yeah, the top that button. Was a different yet. button. This is just the list of buttons you're creating underneath the top button. We'll update the top button as well. And there was other things you're doing, like the border radiuses were changing. Oh yeah. That's you can look for an example in your commented out code. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I can definitely see that. So you can pretty much copy lines, or like copy that button and re use it in your login, because there's only a little bit different. So I focus, we want this line there. Yeah. So I'll just turn the thumb blur. They're on focus. Yeah. You can just use uh, that one as a template to update your that one up there. Well, when you focus, there's certain things you want done. You need to uh, change it to black, but you don't need the variables anymore. All this stuff. Yeah. So you can move the if statement into an on click. Like see how when it's on focus you can't click it anymore? See when it's red though, it doesn't change. Yeah, that's what I mean. So if you put an on click underneath line 25 and put all those ifs inside the on click, leave the on focus and on blur because they're going to change the red and whatever. But have the if statements. So right here, on click. Yeah, back up one. Because you're saying it's not changing it when you click on it. See now it's doing it every time you click on it? Yeah. The only thing that you could add more to is your border radiuses. But see in your on click you got the border radiuses kind of changing. Here? Did you want that effect, or did you want the same effect as the other buttons, that when it's in focus, it changes the border radius? Yeah. So then just move that to the on focus, and you can erase that one, because you already got one in the on blur. Yeah, those ones should start zero, because you want to switch it when you click on focus. That's just the top button, you'll have to do the same thing for the other ones in the loop. What do you mean? All of them? Well, that, that works for the top button. Right. Line 20 is just for the top button, where line 41 is for all the other buttons. Right. But the same issue. There. Okay. That's pretty much what you wanted now. That's perfect.
we can make another list. The first thing we add to the list will be the address that's associated with the Moose's button. And the second thing we add to the list would be the address the SOTIs we associate with the uh, weather. You know, they'll have the same element number sort of thing. Since these addresses are going to be pretty long, yeah. I'll show you how to make a list, multi-lined list. So it's very similar to do a multi-lined one, except for your square brackets will be underneath buttons and uh, touching the wall. So, okay, we'll make a name called uh, or button links, maybe. It's very similar to your button names. Go ahead. So equals. And then some square brackets, and then we'll start filling it in. But we're going to do multi line, so you can have equals and then a space. Yeah, you have to put them in quotations so. though. Right, so hit enter right there. And then back, okay. Like on in between the equal sign and the square brackets. Here? Yeah. Now hit enter there. And then delete like get rid of that space. On the inside of the quotation, or in between the quotation and the square bracket. Here? Yeah, hit enter. Now hit tab. Okay, now we'll just put a comma at the end to add another one. And then we'll fill. Actually, this wouldn't be a bad time to go comma, quotation, quotation, comma, quotation, you know what I mean? Just because you're going to fill them in and you're going to have to do this, so. Uh, we got to do that for all eight of them, so. And erase the last comma because when there's nothing on. So now you can fill in your list with the addresses. So this one will be for weather? Yep. Yep. But now you need them to actually switch the pages. Yeah. So there's an example of changing that frame to a new place. But now what we want to do is in the, the looped version of all the buttons. Okay, instead of text equals button names, we'll change it back. There's this problem with uh, we got to remember in and on click which button you're in, like which number, like the first one being zero, the second one, but that information gets lost. It's only there when it's creating it, it's not there in the on click. So to remember or to assign the first button as button zero, because we want to use that number to, yeah, yeah, that's to use it in those uh, lists or arrays. So there is a way, but it's kind of a a hacky way of doing it. Like, there's this hidden variable called underscore this, which refers to all the pre, the recently, the most recently generate, or the most recent uh, layer, or the layer that it's in. So underscore this refers to button dot, and then uh, this is where we create a variable, but we're associating this variable to this button. It's like kind of connecting it. We're making a variable, but we're making it so it's only in this button. So in the on click, this number. So we're trying to remember what button name is, because our B name. So this is going to be the variable that we'll access later in the on click. So uh, you can name it the same thing, B name, and then equals B name. It's like just kind of connecting it. It may be a little confusing to have have it like that. So you can just say index, because really it's the index of the array. And then go equals B name. So now when we make it on click, we can just say index, and that'll be zero for the first one and one for the other one. Because it's kind of like freezing. So where do I do my on click? 
Just like the on focus and on blur. Yeah, like right here. Yeah, that's a good spot. One click. Yeah, colon, and then enter. Here you'd go main dot source, kind of like you seen up there, small letter, just because you named it that way earlier. Or when you yes, yeah, yeah, it's the short way for source, I guess. And then here you go equals um, button links or however you however you spelt it up there. And then here's where you would, inside the square brackets, you put the index. Index again? Yep. That variable is set in the line underneath it when it's created, though. It's set when it's created, and here it's remembering it when you click on it. Otherwise, it's forgotten. And I don't like showing the underscore this. But you gotta do it right now. Yeah. Later on, it'll be something else. It's just if you're going to set something to a layer, you got to show the parent layer. The best way to do it is to use the, or the underscore this. But anyways, now it should work. Should uh, switch one to another. Oh, that's so stupid. good shit they put in. Better links. I can't drag those. They're just links.